Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video I wanted to address a question we've been asked before and I finally have the opportunity to do it in a way that I think makes sense and that is, can you use rainwater in your aquariums? And so in today's video I'm going to compare rainwater versus tap water. We're going to talk about some of the water parameters and also talk about why it's so important to keep those in mind if you plan to use rainwater in your aquarium. So let's answer the question, can you use rainwater in your aquarium? I think one thing we should think about before we get into the water parameters and water testing is where is the rainwater coming from? So for a lot of people, they collect the rainwater in a 55 gallon drum or some type of a bucket. And usually that water is washing off of a rooftop into a gutter system and possibly into a container. If that's what's happening, you need to be very careful about introducing disease into your fish tank. Let's face it, there are lots of birds that can get on a roof and bird droppings and all kinds of environmental contaminants that can wind up in that rainwater. Therefore, you run the risk of introducing disease every time you use it. So let's go ahead and compare our tap water versus rainwater. We're going to get into the water parameters and some things you should think about. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We have our rainwater that we collected in this Tupperware here. Our Pyrex has our tap water. We're going to compare the pH, the GH, and the KH. Now for the pH, we're going to use our pH meter for our KH and our GH, we're going to use these API 501 test strips. And we're going to do that for a couple reasons. One, using the liquid test kit, when the colors change, it's extremely hard to see on camera. And the second reason is I recently went through and did both the liquid and the test strips here in the same tank, kind of calibrated it. And what I found is that the test strips are right on in terms of the GH they seem to measure the KH just a little bit low, and we don't care about the pH because we have the meter. So let's go ahead, let's do the pH first. And so I'm gonna turn this thing on, and we are gonna go ahead and put this in our tap water now, or I'm sorry, put it in our rainwater. Now I suspect our rainwater is going to be acidic. Uh, there are reports that show rainwater can be somewhere around a 5.0 to a 6.0, so we're gonna go ahead and put this pH meter in, and what we're seeing right now is around a five and a half or so. So this is considerably more acidic than our regular tap water, so we're 5.6. So let's go ahead, that's 5.6, that's very acidic. Now let's compare that to our tap water, which is typically for us right around an 8.2 or so. So it's gonna take a minute, obviously I just had rainwater on the probe of this thing. So it's gonna take a minute for this to go up and I think what we're gonna do is I will come back here in a moment when this thing has equilibrated to our tap water. So let's give that a minute. So it looks like our tap water right now is showing right around a 7.8. That's a little bit lower than what it normally shows. But the point here still remains, our rainwater is often going to have a lower pH than our tap water, and that could have a significant impact on our fish. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and test our KH and our GH with these five-in-one test strips. We are gonna go ahead and test our tap water first. And so to do that, we're just gonna dip this in here real quick. We're gonna pull this thing out, and we can see immediately from the results that our water is in fact relatively hard. Hopefully this will focus for us, but we're looking at the two bottom colors here and we have a very dark blue, which indicates right around a 180 parts per million, pop, maybe higher if it's going off the chart for our general hardness. As I mentioned before, our KH generally doesn't, these test strips don't measure it as accurately as our, our uh, liquid test kit does, but you can see here hopefully that we're somewhere in that, well, maybe 80 to 120. Most likely this is higher. In fact, it is higher, but you could, again, the point here is that we're gonna get a very good comparison using the same testing method. So let's go ahead now, and we are going to test our rainwater and see what that looks like. So again, same thing, we're gonna dip this right in. And what's interesting, and we're gonna see this right away, is look at this. And again, we'll try to make this as not blurry as possible. Let me go ahead and match this up. And we can see here, we have zeros. We have zero for KH, we have zero 
for our GH. Now that can present a lot of problems for us as it pertains to fish. So let's go ahead and talk about those issues. All right, so what lessons can we learn from this? Lesson number one is yes, you can use rainwater. And in some instances, it may be very helpful for your fish. So for instance, if you need water, that is a very low KH and GH and potentially a lower pH, this could be a good option for you. There are so many people who ask, how can I lower the hardness in my aquarium? How can I lower the pH of my aquarium? This potentially could be an option, especially if you're breeding something, maybe you've got some South American cichlids and they require very soft water with a very low pH. We have to be extremely careful when we're dealing with water that has no GH or no KH. In fact, we're gonna have to remineralize it to a certain extent because fish generally don't live in a GH and KH of zero and that can wreak havoc on your pH, something we talk about a lot more in the water hardness video. But for the vast majority of us, we do need to be very careful about using rainwater in our aquariums. Yes, the pH is gonna be lower, but without that buffering capacity of your KH, you can have wild fluctuations in your pH, something that we talk about more in the water hardness video. So if you put things like driftwood in your tank or your fish are producing ammonia that's converted to nitrite and the nitrate that can lead to acidic conditions in your tank and a crash in your pH if your KH isn't high enough to buffer the changes. So I hope we learned something in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more information on water parameters, definitely check out this video up here. That is a video we did to explain pH in much greater detail. The video down here has some information about water hardness. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.